You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. There are a few things that you can always depend on in life. The arrival of pumpkin spice lattes right on time in early August when the temperature is in the upper 90s. The New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. The Cleveland Browns not in the Super Bowl. And this. Nervous Democrats worrying that their choices for president just aren't good enough and pining for someone to enter the fray at the last minute and save everything and everyone. And it's all happening again. In late October, the New York Times wrote a piece headlined, quote, Anxious Democratic Establishment asks, is there anybody else? Now, the very next day, the Washington Post had their own version of this Democrats panicking story headlined, Anxiety rises among Democrats worried about parties' prospects in 2020. The point of both of those stories was the exact same thing, and it went basically like this. Former Vice President Joe Biden is a very weak frontrunner, if he's a frontrunner at all at this point. His fundraising, he ended September with less than $9 million in the bank, is so weak that he might not be able to even run an aggressive national campaign for the nomination come spring 2020. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has stepped into the void created by Biden's weakness, which is also bad, these Democrats worry, because she is likely too liberal, especially in her support to wipe out all private health insurance, to win over moderate and swing voters these Democrats think the party needs. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, same problem. So Ben Mayor Pete Buttigieg, you ask? I'm sure he's intriguing, but he's also just 37 years old and has never been in charge of anything larger than his own hometown. And the rest of the field, not really anyone there who has any sort of realistic chance to be the nominee. So, that was my panic face. Panic, panic, panic. Also panic. Who, you ask, do these skittish Democrats want to fill the void left by their minuscule 19 candidate field? Well, there's all sorts of names out there. Here's a not totally complete list of the people who have been mentioned. Hillary Clinton, Michael Bloomberg, Michelle Obama, Eric Holder, John Kerry, Sherrod Brown, Deval Patrick, Bob Iger, Admiral William McRaven, Chris Saliza. Yep, that's the list. It's, it's pretty solid. Pretty, pretty solid. Especially that last name. Yeah, good guy. Now, the truth is that any of the people mentioned as potential late entrants into the race, with me notably accepted, would be intriguing candidates. They would. So Clinton won the popular vote in 2016 over Trump by nearly 3 million ballots. John Kerry, he served in the Senate, was the party's 2004 presidential nominee, and has been Secretary of State. Michelle Obama is, well, Michelle Obama. So you can see why some nervous Nellies in the Democratic Party who don't think they have a candidate who can beat President Donald Trump in 2020 might be intrigued by the possibility of any one of these people getting into the race in its later stages. And because this is politics, several of these folks are doing the old, I'm not saying I'm interested, but I'm also not, not interested thing. Quote, Hillary Clinton, according to two people close to her, has not ruled out jumping in herself, reported the Post. And then there was this from the Times, quote, Carrie, who associates say has wondered aloud about whether he should have run and has found it hard to watch Mr. Biden's missteps, has also been urged to get in, end quote. <laughs> Not self-serving at all. But the point is, sure, there's a chance here, right? Eh, probably not, for a few very specific reasons. The biggest reason is that all of these people had a chance to get into the 2020 race like a year ago, and they didn't do it. Why? Oh. But they each had their own reasons, and those reasons don't really matter, honestly. Hesitation in politics equals death. And it's simply too late now to get into the race. The Iowa caucuses are now just a few months away, and it takes time and lots of money to build strong organizations in those early voting states. The other big reason to be very suspicious of these late entrants is what I call the backup quarterback theory. Okay, so the most popular guy in every town with an NFL team is usually the backup quarterback. He's never actually in the game, so people can imagine how great he might be without ever having to see their hopes dashed on the field. But if the starting quarterback struggles or gets hurt and the team turns to the backup and he's short of the ideal that fans built him up to be, and he always is, then look out. People get mad, and they get mad fast. 
What I'm saying is it's very easy to be one of these people on the sidelines. Democrats not happy with their options boost you up in their own minds as everything they want in a nominee. But if any of these people actually, you know, ran for president, their warts and flaws would be exposed. And the same people who were so very excited about them would suddenly be a lot less enthused. And the reality for Democrats is that their 2020 team is already on the field. Deal with it. And that is the point. We make New Point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.